Welcome to a new rational show and welcome back to the table. I have got some old friends with me today and a new friend today. Welcome, DJ Stavros. Hey, how's it going, Nigel? It's going well. It's good to see you back here. A Hello. new face, Chara. Nice to meet you, Nigel. Hi. Nice to see you. And of course, Shawana. My old friend. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. We've got a lot of ground to cover this morning, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you about it. But Chara, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you have suddenly become a part of these two incredible people. I was once with them some years ago and went off and just did my own thing and went to grow and learn. And then I was like, you know what? I need to come back home <laughs> because I'm looking a little shaky, baby. So I was like, let me see. I'm going to go to the Roxy in Denver and we'll see what happens. So now you're really a part of the group again. Yes, sir. Good to hear. DJ Stavros, it's so much fun to see you again. I try, man. But you have been all over the country. <laughs> oh, it's been touring, little... touring, touring. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a, a tour was tour was my idea. Um, I really wanted to get to our fans who didn't get the chance to see us in state. You know, we do a lot of shows at the Roxy. It's like our second home. Um, and we do a lot of shows in state, you know, Pueblo, Colorado Springs, but a lot of our newer fans are coming from a little bit out there, different states, different countries even. Uh, so we're trying to touch everybody. I know about Pennsylvania. Yes. And we could talk again about having to travel across Kansas, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to do the, this incredible tour? Because you've been all over the place. Yes, yes. Well, t I, I took a tour to California once. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing. We went to Hollywood, um, and they kind of kicked us out of Hollywood. Oops. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, we were at a mall, and uh, they were like, you can't wear the mask. And oh. I was like, well, we have a huge problem. Um, if I can't wear my mask, I can't come in this place. And they were like, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, all right, then. <laughs> um, so we stopped in Las Vegas around there, too. And uh, they were really welcoming to us. Good. And just because of how great that tour went, I wanted my family to go on this tour. You know, and this one was just 80G, 80 generations. And I wanted to reach our Wu-Tang brothers, mm -hmm. which is the most of them stayed in Pennsylvania. How well received were you in Pennsylvania? Go on, Shawana. Oh, you were there out on stage. I, yeah. You knew what the yeah, audience was I, doing. I did. I did get to do that, you know, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> um, oh, man, it was, it was so good to see, you know, a few of my fans that were, uh, you know, been engaged and following me and, you know, um, they actually had come out here before, you know, and so to see them in their stomping grounds and, you know, for them to come out and, and support, it was, uh, it was golden. It, you know, felt, felt like, you know, like she was saying, like home, you know, you, I got to, I got to know a few of my fans and that was. Oh, that's nice. That, you know, it, it, it was sort of intimate, you know, towards the end, where I was able to spend a little bit more time and talk with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. So you were able to sort of also mingle right. with these people and, and really sort of make a one-on-one -on -one attempt. Absolutely. That'll mean the world to them. It really will. You know, there's a saying um, by Violent J of ICP. He says, you perform the same for one as you do a thousand. Right. And he would take one Juggalo fan over a thousand mainstream artists mm -hmm. any day. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's an old saying in, in theater, there are no uh, there are no small parts. So it doesn't matter, you know, whether you've got one line or a, or a, a soliloquy. Yeah. You put the same effort into it. That's right. Absolutely. And it shows. If you're number two actor and you're bringing that pail out to spill that water, right. man, you'd be the greatest number two actor you can be. Totally agreed. Shara, ha have you ever toured before? 
Birth of a Demons tour, um, the 420 Judah Priest tour, and then a little bit before that I did a mini tour um, in New Mexico. Oh, okay. And then um, I got to experience just different fans, and some fans I have are R&B fans, and then some of them are just hip-hop. They just want to hear me rap. They just want to see me do my thing. Most, though, love when I sing. It's something pure that comes out soulful. And then now I'm slowly transitioning into pop music, and I love it. It's, it's funny you should say that, because I've never heard of anyone transitioning into pop. It's always the other way round. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm... But what is your definition of pop music? My version, my definition would be like, you just have fun with it, you know? It's poppy, you get up like a different type of beat that's more like upbeat, not too, right. not too many beats per minute, and then you just enjoy it. And you just make it your own. That's, well, the, might, key. that's the key to all songs, make it your I own. I might be making my own genre, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm on the road to doing. And Which wouldn't be a bad thing. Right. It really wouldn't. Right. See, that's what 80 Generations is about, though. Our company very much sticks to uh, getting the artist out and giving them what they need, how they feel, you right. know, and what their transitions are going to be. So because you were doing this big tour, have you learned what not to do? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because, because <laughs> you know, you can learn what to do. That's normally easy. It's learning what not to do that can be a bit tough. Absolutely. Um, what did we learn not to do? Not to book a tour and not have more stops. Exactly. For sure. For I sure. Think that was number the, one thing. Yeah, the biggest thing. We, absolutely. We went through so many states and we stayed in so many states. Mm -hmm. And I really think a lot of those we should have performed in and booked those as well yes. for our route. Yes. Um, yeah, so absolutely. if there's anything, it'd be that. So taking a little bit more time, yeah. a little bit gentler. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And also with more rest stops. Oh, yeah. course, most definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Rest is Probably very a important. Hotel or, or a hotel. <laughs> you know, a hotel, definitely. <laughs> Sleeping in the car is not where it's at. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Hotels are a must. Hopper, here we come. The That's app. <laughs> Not sponsored. It, even the worst <laughs> hotel room in the world is better than these, a car seat. Apart from that, was there anything else that came up that you thought, you know what, we can learn from this? You know, I, I'd say who you're booking for shows. Yes. Find out if they're not just fans of your music, but fans of the process, fans of yeah. the tour. You know, if they, what we've noticed is if they care and they've put more into it, then it'll show on stage, right? you know? Completely but if it's something agree. that they're like, oh, we're just kind of doing a favor for someone, or we don't really like this guy or this girl or right. something, then they're gonna treat the stage like that. Another thing I might add, know who your headliners are, people. Come <laughs> on. How many times did I post headlining DJ Stavros, the beautiful Shawana Na? Not me. I never said in those sentences, me. I am learning. I want to do a special guest appearance, co-headlining, and work my way up to headlining tour. Because it's a lot of responsibility. Absolutely. Because it, it, if something doesn't work, falls on you, falls on, but as a group, we collectively handled it amazingly, I feel. That's good, that's good. Was there anyone else with you while you were, while you were doing the tour, or, or was it just the three of you? Um, yes, uh, so for our Pueblo stop, we had Eilis. Um He's one of our lead uh, uh, artists. He's been with us three and a half years. Okay. Um, very seasoned, um, and the performance that he, me and him laid together because we're a group uh, that goes by the name of the Wu Assassins. Um, and we killed it, man. It was like fire got ignited on stage it by really was. a Oh, so it was awesome. Pool. So yeah. much fun to watch. It was, it was amazing. Extraordinary. Um, and he's also a member of 80 Generations. Oh, okay. You know, so he's with the company. Um, and, yeah, he's he also kind of uh, I guess works the crowd, you know, a little bit better, you know, so he's very playful, 
you know, he's very uh, on and off stage, mm -hmm. very much in your face, you know, and I love it. I love when he's on stage with me. It's amazing. Learning how to work a crowd is an oh. art form. Mm -hmm. Also, if the sound system goes out, you have to be in front of your crowd and get off the big stage. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn to do that for Denver. Yes. Something yes. happened with the sound system. We have no clue what happened. And I was like, okay, they can't hear me. Here I come. And right. then bam, it was just... That's what it was. The show must go on. It has to. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember I was at a Pink Floyd concert in London in, at the height of the oil embargo fiasco back in the 70s at the Rainbow Theatre. And halfway through one of their songs, everything went out. Yeah. Wow. Total, total blackout in, in the oh. whole of London. I'm, wow. We're not talking the theatre. We're talking. Oh, wow. Just blackness. Wow. So the emergency lights come on. Nick Mason, their drummer, was, did one of the most professional things I've ever seen on stage. He didn't stop drumming. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. He didn't stop drumming. So everything else was quiet except for the drums. And he just brought the beat down. And he was just doing a nice little sort of, sort of riffs in black, in the blackness. Oh, wow. And then eventually they got their generators fired up and running. Lights came back up. They made sure everything was working, and he took the beat right back to where he was, oh, and they wow. continued with the song. It's the most professional thing I've ever seen on stage. See, Absolutely. We, we, we had two moments like that, actually. Yeah. Um, during our Denver stop, um, there was a club, that she, the one she's talking mm, about, yes. that the sound just wasn't going, um, and it didn't sound right, then it was lower, then it got high, then it got low, then the, the mics didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everything that could imagine that happened happened. <laughs> the first, the first night, the, the first yeah. night, we were and just like, "How do so, we improvise?" A uh, very, very, very good friend of ours named Scum um, talked to the owner because they were to the point where they were going to shut down our show. Yep. Mm -hmm. And because they they had some noise decimal something, and if they got too high on it, then they would have to turn it down. Um, nobody was okay with that. Um, so what we did was he asked him about it. We moved the whole show inside of the club. And, man, it just blew up from there on out. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. The, the performances were amazing. Okay, now we've talked about the past. I think it's about time to talk about the future. There's a new album coming out. One Lovely Night. Give us a little bit of a clue about this. Originally, we it was going to be my album. It was going to be my new R&B album. I was going to try this R&B thing for once um, and try to really get into, like she was saying, like a pop sound. Um, so I was trying like a darker pop sound. <laughs> um, and I loved it. It was, gonna, it was working out. It was great. It was going to work. Yeah. Um, but I saw Shawana's growth. And I saw our relationship's growth. And I felt that it was time that we got a little lovey-dovey with our fans and our public, you know, and really expressed ourselves in these songs. You're going to tell me you've done a 180, aren't you? I did. I did. Wow. Tell us more. I'm intrigued. Well, r and is not my thing. I've never made a love song in my life. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> one. The one. The one. The but one was, but yeah. you're right. I love that right. one. That's my yeah. favorite one. <laughs> we also uh, performed, a, was it one or two songs? Two songs. It was, yeah, it two was songs Ghost, from, right? From One Lovely Night. Oh. Everybody. One that I just love is Ghost. I can't wait till it drops. I'm going to play it all the time. It is. It is. Be a streaming great song. It is all great the time. Song. And, and that's kind of what we do is. Yeah. During a lot of our sets, during a lot of the times that we're doing our shows, we try to give the fans another taste mm -hmm. yeah. of the next album. Yep. And so far, man, people love One Lovely Night. Oh, they it's going to be amazing. Action. Like, that's one, some feedback that we've gotten is that we are very theatrical. Yes. And that's a very different thing. And oh. they, they, they said they just love our interaction. And it's very much improv. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it. Oh, really? They, they come no, together. It's like they, it, they just go like this, and it's just like you're just zoned in. You're like, what's going to happen next? That's because you know each other so well. There's a lot of parts where 
um, maybe I would come close to her and we'd be kind of talking to each other. And then she would immediately, without shadow of a doubt, be, you know, talking to me. And then we're going back and forth, walking back and forth, you know, in, and sync. Then in yeah. sync. And then she would turn and then I would turn and we would walk the exact same, you know, uh, numbers and steps. Right. And people do. They think we've choreographed this yeah. whole thing. We this don't <laughs> practice a day in our life. No, no. So this is literally improv on in stage. music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. We're making our own lane, a theatrical hip-hop and yeah. R&B. Yeah, yeah. That takes some doing. Yeah. 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 That we, really does take some doing. We call it a controversial hip-hop. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This I have got to see. Oh, trust without me. Without a picture. shadow of a doubt. Maybe we can get you to a show now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to say about the new album? Ah, oh, man. The art and the the art's so different. It's it's something I've never tried before. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, the new thing out right now is AI. Um, and that's on all the apps and everyone's phones and everything like that to turn you into like a character. We used a lot of that. Um, and between that and our own faces and emotions and stuff. I think the art for this surpasses anything that I've done before. Excellent. You know, for sure. And I love the way it's coming out. Um, our new studio that we're working with, the Pajama Room, uh, amazing. He is an amazing uh, engineer. He is. And I cannot wait for him to do the rest of this album. Yeah. It's funny because there is a show called The Pajama Game. Oh. Yeah, there is. It's a very old one. I believe you have something to show us. I do. And I believe you also need a pen. I do. It's kind of a magic thing. Um, why I say magic? Because it was magic for Cheryl to come on board with us. We and didn't even know how it happened. I think the universe has brought us all together. Absolutely. And since Meant the universe does has its to job, be. I feel we should only do our job. Yeah. Um, it's been about, what, a week since you've been with us? Back with us. Well, since a couple, tour. couple plus week, tour. Cu plus tour. Plus tour. Couple, weeks, couple yeah. weeks, yeah. And we've been talking about it, but we haven't done the official. So the official thing we need to do is get her actually signed on paper yeah. with her contract. Yep. Yeah. Right there and right now. And she's read it. So. Oh, I'm sure she has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this week, this week, it's a contract. I hope she bloody has. <laughs> Surprise. But how many artists do not read the contract? They just sign their life away. If your signature is going on a piece of paper, it is rather important to know exactly what your signature is going on. Right. While she's finishing the paperwork, do you miss your modeling? Oh, yeah, I do. I have to be honest. I miss it a lot. Um, I didn't even realize how much I missed it until this year. I've only done one photo shoot. I've done no runway shows. I've produced no fashion series. I have strictly been focused on my final transition into recording arts. But it's not like you've given up something for nothing, and that's and important. It's so important, and I've grown in, you know, uh, getting in magazines and things like that, and now it's you know, learning what sounds I can produce or not produce. Right. Uh, you know, if I sound good as a pop artist. Shara, it looks like you are now officially a part of the team. Yay. Congratulations. Thank you. I think Thank you, you. I think you're going to have an absolute wonderful life with these two. And we've been friends for... We've been friends for years. Since before I even started music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and actually, I'm um, four years sober. I don't do any of the other stuff. I'm completely just ready to have my career and see where it takes me. Absolutely. And I'm on a life's journey. I have a song called Let This Go. It's out on all platforms. It's doing really, really well. Excellent. Music video will be filmed next month with Pat Anthony at Switchboard Studios. And then I'm working on more. So Excellent. we'll see. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Closing words. Any generations is the place to be. Right. That's that's it, man. You know, what my company started off as this little thing and I needed music for the tiniest thing. And now we've turned into and gotten some of the greatest artists on earth. And we're next. 
Shara, closing words. I feel elated. I feel blessed. I feel like I'm home. It's my family. I have a biological family, obviously, yeah, yes. but this is I my know exactly what you mean. family in the world that actually understands me. <laughs> is that, which, I'm, which sometimes, you know, it does happen. Your real family doesn't. They really they, don't. They don't understand exactly why you're doing they, something. They don't. No, not at all. Especially, so, especially in, in what you guys do for a living. And I, mean, I love it. I, I want to do this until I'm no longer here anymore, until my very last breath. I know that's exactly what these two would say. Shwana, left you till last. Bless Closing me. words, darling. You know, I would just say to people, don't give up. I don't care who tells you you can't. I don't care if your brain tells you you can't. Don't give up because to, I don't know if I would say quote a great man, but paraphrase a great man, Steve Harvey. Um, he was homeless in his car when he got that call. And, you know, how many people gave up on him? Family, friends, everybody. And, you know, I've, I've been there. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. If you, do not, if you have a dream, it's there for a reason. Follow it. Even if... This isn't successful. Now, I don't believe that, so don't get me wrong. Yeah. You tried. Right. We did. And that's what's important, is trying. Absolutely. 100% agreed. Because it's no good taking your terminal breath going, oh, if only I had. I would rather experience it now than to wish what could have been right. years later. It's so nice to see you all back at the table. It really is. And, and it's so nice to see Shara joining the table for the Thank very you. first time. And hopefully I'm going to see the three of you back here sometime in the near future. Absolutely. Look forward because to it. Absolutely. I, I would really like to know, you know, what happens with One Lonely Night. Yes. Okay. Because it sounds like you're really trying something different, but it's going to be very, very successful. Thank you. And, it's so good to hear that you're willing to give stuff a chance and oh, yeah. give stuff a try. <laughs> oh, yeah. It really is important. Anyway, guys, once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us at the table for another Rational Show. I'm Nigel Abes, your host. Once again, thank you for joining me here at the table. Signing off for now. Goodbye. All my life I've been a troublemaker Don't let me love me, I'm a heartbreaker I'll bring your whole world down And you want it That's me and you doubt your bullet, yeah See all my days I've been a